right, all right, all right. This is the Nuff Said Podcast episode six, I believe. Correct, Trey? We are on episode six. Five. Five? No, five. it's, it's got to be six. Maybe it is, but I put five. Let me make sure. That's a dang shame. Yep, it's episode <laughs> six. You fucked that up. up. Anyway, this is Nuff Said episode six. My name is Adam Dickens and... This is the best co-host on the planet, Trey Adams. Uh, We are here to entertain and give some of the best uh, commentary and analysis in the game. Uh, Before we get started, thank you for Signers Wave for our intro song. You guys are amazing. Uh, One of the best music collectives. I say the best music collective on the East Coast. Um, again, they made the intro song, hit their email if you want to, uh, book them for a gig or just tell them they do a great job. Uh, either way, uh, that's what they're there for. Uh, Trey, how are you doing, sir? I am chilling. I'm, I'm in chill mode. Been in chill mode since the summer started. Um, uh, I feel like the podcast is getting in the chill mode and we just, we're, we're, we're grounded. Nah, nah, no, no chill. We ramping up, son. This is grind time, grind time, <laughs> as it gets. Uh, before again, before we do get started, is everything looking fine on the YouTube live? Am I choppy still? No, you're good. Okay, cool. I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah, you're good. Um, let me check kick first before we get started too. You're good on there. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Uh. <laughs> Again, this is Nuff Said, episode six. We have been doing this for a month and a half, and I'm so excited, man. This is uh, this is our baby, right? Let's put it the best way, our baby, uh, and it is growing and chugging along. Uh, a lot of progress and a lot of feedback from you guys. Super happy about that. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get jumping into things. Um, yeah, let's roll. Um, yeah, so, oh, before, again, before we get started, social media, we have, we post cl- clips on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, so make sure you guys go follow us. Again, we put a lot of time into this, uh, and we hope we entertain you. Uh, we try to, you know, give our honest opinions with a little bit of spiciness, uh, and Facts. that's what we try to give you guys, right? Facts. Yeah. Uh, but again, we do put a lot of time into it, so please give the follow. We want to. We want you guys to get our content in every single way possible you can. We want you to tell your friends about us, um, and a follow, a share, a like, anything you do is great, and it supports us, and we're there for it. Uh, with that being said, let's start with the NBA content that we have, or lack thereof. Um, since we're going into the off season, a lot of off season content. Uh, Lonzo Ball will not be back next season. We're not even talking about. We're talking two seasons ahead. What podcast you know talks about two seasons into the future? Okay, you know what I'm saying. So Lonzo Ball, uh, he's still having issues with his knee after multiple surgeries. Trey, how are you feeling about this man? Oh. It's sad to hear. It is. Uh, I I was a fan of his in college. Um, seeing what he did at UCLA and then the comparisons that he had of uh, my favorite player growing up of Jason Kidd, it was just like, okay, I do see, I do see her, I do see some of that in him. I do see a resemblance. And then to come to find out he gets to the league, the Lakers not utilizing him the way they should, and then he gets to Chicago, well, New Orleans. Um, I think he, they should have kept him, but they didn't. And then Chicago, that's where everything goes downhill. And at this point, not to put a knock on his career saying it's over, but the guy kind of has a Brandon Roy career. And I was a big fan of Brandon Roy. And Lonzo, again, he's just, I mean, his knees. As, as a point guard, you need it. You got to play defense. You got He's a transition runner, playmaker. Like, I mean, he, he needs his legs. His explosiveness, it, it comes from his legs. But the fact that it's the same knee, it's just like, come on. Like, I mean, at this point, you don't even know if he's going to touch a ball again on the court. You don't know. 
I really agree with you, and I, I carry the same sentiment. When it comes to Lonzo Ball, you know, we saw him, you know, the 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 old show they used to have with the Ball brothers. Uh, I used mm. to watch it on Facebook a lot. So, you know, we essentially we've seen him grow up. <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I, know, am. Was, I watched it. I was guilty. <laughs> it, it was entertaining. And it, it really is sad when you see somebody like Lonzo Ball grow up. And he's overcome so many obstacles. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of people said he couldn't get past his shot. A lot of people say he couldn't get past his dad. A lot of people said, you know, he couldn't overcome, you know, the expectations of getting drafted by the Lakers. And all of this to come to a point of where you can't get past a knee injury that seems like a one in a million chance, pretty much, is what he's mm-hmm. dealing, dealing with. And an anomaly, some shit that you would see on like House, the show or something. Right. And, and if I'm a Bulls fan, man, I'm crying. I am, you know, you, you brought up Brandon Roy, but, you know, it, it's for Bulls fans, they've been hit time and time again with injuries, like the Derrick Rose situation, where it's just, mm-hmm. you have, not saying, not comparing Lonzo to Derrick Rose, but just the injury aspect of like having hope in a player that you really want to do well and then not be like that you know uh and his freaking uh his freaking like you said he he was he was playing good the 35 games he played last year he was averaging 13 5 and 5 i and mean play, that could be playing great defense playing great defense mm-hmm. on top of the point absolutely absolutely he did not come in as a, a defender and then now all of a sudden you were saying Emmett Caruso could be playing defense on the best guards and giving them hell. I, I agree. I agree. You know, it, it it's it it really is sad, but at the same time, man, it, it almost feels like Chicago Bulls just gonna Chicago bull it and they just going it this it feels like this is gonna keep happening again and again with them. Uh you know, I I have the hope that somehow they'll take care of this. He obviously won't come back. This what? How how are they going to take care of it? What can they do? It ain't nothing on them. That's him. No, not the bulls, but like the doctors, <laughs> fool. Like come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what you think the fans about to start doing surgery on this man? <laughs> uh, you know, I hope the doctors. I have the sentiment and the hope that the doctors take care of this. You know, anomaly that he's dealing with. Um, mm. I also think that, like, he's not, even if they do, he's not going to come back this close to the player that he was, you know? He's getting plenty of rest, <laughs> but that's about it. He, you know? He's also aging during that time of rest. He's also aging, so it's just like, you, 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 you're you only that age once, and if you 35 games into the season, you're only playing 35 games because of a, the, a pain in your knee, I mean, you do you do what you gotta do to get your your to heal properly. But again, it's just like, dude, how long? He, he, I, like I said, I don't even last time I even mentioned his name. That's how bad it is. And again, and, it's like I hope I wish for the best for him. But yeah. And on top of that, now you gotta see your brother ball out. You gotta see Lamelo mm. ball out. You gotta go. You know you he's you know uh, Lonzo is gonna go to Lamelo's games, and yeah. he's gonna be watching him and. The fact that he can't do anything about getting on the court. It's not like he didn't play well. It's not anything that's really his fault. It's just your body failing you. And that can be, you know, if we really want to talk about mental health, not trying to get too deep. But that can be super depressing. Uh, And, I mean, granted, he is still making millions, you know, from his contract guarantee. But, you know, if you really love the game and you've seen your brother play and your teammates play and you not play. That's just rough. Yeah. <laughs> rough as hell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but let's move on because we we tired of depressing uh, conversations. <laughs> you know. Uh, what, what you mean? This next topic ain't no fucking better. <laughs> you got John Collins getting traded to the Jazz <laughs> in exchange for Rudy Gay, a second round pick, and some, and, and some cheddar. I'm, and I'm, clearly that, that was a salary dump. But go ahead. I'll let you. I'll get you go first. Well, no, I was curious. I was gonna ask you a question as far as like where do you see him fitting in 
um, on this Jazz roster because they do have a pretty good team. Like, it's not phenomenal, but it's good. They had a good season uh, last year. So where do you think he fits in? He's going to be the – the. he's coming off the bench. He's not starting. I feel like, obviously, you, at the four, you got their fucking all-star and Lori marketing, so that's not happening. And then I believe they really believe what, uh, Walker Kessler can be their center. I mean, he was first uh, all-team – he was all, all rookie first team, so I mean they they clearly believe he can be that that plug in at the center. So where does that leave John Collins? He's coming off the bench and he's going to be that energizer guy, and it sucks for him because seeing him come into the league, being a, he's coming um, being a North Carolina native and all that, he freaking went to Wake Forest. He didn't have a jump shot, and then he developed one, and then he gets traded to a team that. I feel like is is clearly in a rebuild. It sucks for him, but it's just like I think he'll get his playing time. I do think that um, he'll have to earn his bread. He will. You know what's crazy about? So you you talked about him developing jump shot. So apparently, here's like a little sh- uh, shocking fact if no one's ever heard of it. So on his ring finger of I believe his shooting hand is mm-hmm. that it's abnormally big now. Like he apparently hit something while or playing while he's playing ball, and it's it swelled up. So pretty much like his ring finger looks like the humpback of like Notre Dame, pretty much. And so apparently that's what was affecting his shot when he was in Atlanta, and essentially that's pretty much why he regressed is what they uh, brought up. Uh, but it, you know, not a lot of people are talking about it, but apparently it's a thing. Like it looks horrific. Like it, it's disgusting, and. Uh, you know, the finger injuries are common in any, you know, whether it's NFL or NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently, that's really hindered his shot. Um, and, you know, he's going to pass his physical, obviously. But uh, that's a big concern of what a lot of people have. So, essentially, if you take away his jump shot, you know, he's great at catching lobs, you know. That's, yeah. <laughs> but it takes away a big part of his uh his potential skill set um and Agreed. essentially you get half a player if if it if it is true that it really does mess with the shot too much you're getting half a player uh i do like him though as just as a player and going to the jazz i think you know he's a good a good field piece um i mm-hmm. think that um, for a team, I think he brings energy, and he, in those moments where you you know you need a little bit of boost, he can provide you with a type of play, whether it's catching a lob um, or blocking shots, whatever it is. He is that energy booster for a team. Um, and if we're being honest, the Jazz do kind of need that. If we're you know if 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 we are being honest, uh, I think it just makes the Jazz team just that more stacked. Um, you know, with the hopes that he can have. His uh his jump shot come with him, so if you know. he if he could have been if his rebounding was a little bit more tenacious and in, in a sense of Kenneth Fareed, I think he would be people would be drooling over this guy in a sense of we need him to come off the bench we need that if but I don't think he he in watching him play and betting on this guy, um, he doesn't rebound as enthusiastic as he should and i think that's what keeps him back in a way because that's why i feel like that's why atlanta gave him up i think in the sense of they was like clint capella plays enough defense and he gets his rebounds we can we can offer to get rid of john collins and i think if he was more tenacious rebounding people like for instance golden state they would be like yo we could use that come on like and you could shoot now come on like, I feel like if he just upgraded that a little bit more, which I think he's going to do now that he has the the team that's going to need him to rebound in a way, hopefully, they he can benefit from that. So, again, maybe it's maybe a perfect suit for him um, in the sense of now he can actually develop more fully instead of the team kind of giving up on you in one area. Because let's be real, Atlanta did give up on him rebounding-wise. That's why they got Clint Capella. They traded for Clint Capella. Well, that's why I was a little confused because I thought that him and Trey Young had a good rapport, especially with you know Trey loving to do those like fake lob assist yeah. kind of uh, floater type 
you know, that, that, that little fakey does. I, so I thought, you know, maybe this is the first step of t- kind of telling Trey Young that like some giving him a message for the future as far as Trey Young maybe leaving out of Atlanta or moving on from Trey Young. Um, I, I thought see. they had a good rapport. I thought they were, you know, pretty much friends from what I've been told. Um, here's a little fact too about John Collins. His dad was in the military, and he does, uh, as far as his development uh, as a kid and throughout college, um, he always thanked his dad because his dad really put in the, uh, the discipline aspect to him and really stayed on him about, uh, you know, just working on his, his basketball skills throughout his life. Uh, and he, overall, he's just a good kid. Like, if you've ever seen him have a conversation or in, a, in an interview, he's just a just straight-up good kid. So I don't have any doubts on him when it comes to you know him working on his game or like if he's out here doing the wrong things like yeah. no doubt in my no. mind um i think it's just i see this as the hawk sending a message to Trey young and let's be honest like clint capella last time i checked i'm not sure of his age but i think he's getting up there i mean yeah. i could you know and so no, you're when, right you're right when you talk about the future that it's like i said i think it's Sending Trey Young a message of of what's about to happen, uh, you know whether it happens or not. Uh, since we're talking the off season NBA, uh, Tobias Harris was asked a question uh, um, as far as what he thought about his free agency and uh, trade rumors that have been coming out, specifically with uh, James Harden, uh, who who actually signed his player option today with the Seventy Sixers. Uh, they're still expecting to trade James Harden. Yes, he signed, he, he signed his player option, but they're still expected to trade him. Uh, so essentially, a lot of people are talking Tobias Harris is going to be a part of the trade package. Uh, okay. If, possibly. But at the same time, we've been hearing Tobias Harris trade rumors for three years since he signed that big deal that everybody hated. Max. Um, right. He essentially said that casual 76ers fans would trade him for a crumble cookie. Now, the important question is, what is your opinion on crumble cookies? And have you ever tried them? I mean, if it's an Oreo, I would trade him for that. I would trade him for some Oreos. <laughs> you will. What, what he does in the goddamn playoffs, especially after this year, it was like, what the hell? You You can play good against kind of teams that you're expected to be being Brooklyn averaging over 15 between 15 and 20 points a game and then when you play Boston you act you get games where you're putting up two points a game it's like nah dog that's 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 not that's not cool that's not acceptable they signed him to a max contract correct I believe so I'm off the top of my head I'm not 100% sure I did not look up his contract no Okay, I, I think they did. I believe they did because I think they, they had to choose between signing Jimmy Butler to a max contract or him to a max. Either way, it was a very expensive contract that they signed him to. Got you, got you. That, that's just, he's, he's too inconsistent, man. And it's, when they need him, that, that's the thing. It's not just in general because I do feel like regular season, he does his regular shit. When they're playing again playoffs, like not, well, last year he was balling in the playoffs. If you look at the stats, he was balling. It's just when they play a good defensive team, pretty much a contending team, certain games you don't know if he's going to show up or not. And I think that's the part that scares the hell out of me if I'm a GM or, or a coach. It's just like I have this guy that could play 37 to 43 minutes a game because he is tall. He is – I'm not going to say a defender. He's not. Um, but, again, uh, a, at least close to 30, 39% three-point shooter – he could he could somewhat shoot a decent J, but again, you don't know if he's actually going to be hitting or not. And the fact that you put up less than in two games, you let average less than ten points against the Celtics is like, dude, they're going to be there moving forward. The same way you say Milwaukee is going to be there moving forward. You can't do that, and you ain't getting no younger. So am I supposed to trust that you're just going to fix yourself overnight when we play a good team in the playoffs, or do I just? Say fuck it and get rid of you. On top of get rid of you, uh, over of your overpaid contract, that's I, I think you get rid of. So with with everything you just said, his response to this question was pretty much he started going down the the um, his list of like his skill set, 
right? Yeah. So he talked about, you know, him being a great, a, a, well, he's a great post big. Uh, he talked about how, con- he's talked about his consistency. He talked about not having any problems off the court, uh, being as far as staying on his like physical skills, as far as being in True. shape, never having to worry True. about that. Um, and his offensive skill set is what he brought up. And so I, th- I thought it was a great response to what he said. Uh, now, do I feel how you feel as far as him not being consistent enough offensively? Absolutely. What I do feel, it though, is he's great in a uh, a two role. I don't think he's great being that number three guy on the offense or fourth guy. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I think he's a great number two um, because I think that him, kind of like Chris Middleton, they both have somewhat the same skill set, but they have to, yes, as far as their post skills, it's a saying, but mm. they, they're, they have to, they're rhythm players. They have to get enough chances uh, mm. to stay consistent. And so That's with deep. that, with that being a great number two, just like Chris Middleton is a great number two, Actually, I'll say good number two. Great is giving Chris Middleton, I feel like, a little too much respect. But, like, you know, it, you know, either way, I think he's great in the number two role. I think he showed how great he could be when he was with the Clippers, correct? You remember his Clippers days? To, to buy his? He yeah. was okay. He wasn't all oh, that. He was okay. I remember watching him with the Clippers, and as you, you talked about his, his consistency on the offensive mm. He was a lot more consistent with um, the Clippers. I and agree. also, the big part of him being with Philly was Doc Rivers because that was his same coach from the Clippers. Mm-hmm. And so with Doc Rivers being gone, it's kind of like, why do you care about the 76ers fan? And then on top of that, you you take a, a hit at him, which to me, all of this is adding up to he doesn't want to be with the 76ers anyway. Um so I, I don't really care what he thinks about casual 76ers fans. I mean, Crumble Cookie, in my opinion, is trash anyway. So, like, if they trade you for some, it's trash. It's absolutely, like, go insomnia cookies. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Look, bro, look. You know what I'm saying? What if it's, I, what is, what if it's Graham Graham cookies that you get from, the, like, the little store that's, like, usually now they're, like, a dollar, but... What if it's them crumbled up? Them shit's soft and good. Oatmeal I'll raisin? F- what? I'll, I'll trade f- them for them I'll shits. F- I fuck with them. I used to sell them in high school. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll trade them for them cookies. <laughs> fuck out of here. But crumble cookies is what he referenced. And crumble cookies trash. Uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, it, it's He doesn't want to be there. Uh, if anything, I would, I would, you know, maybe increase the trade talks. Like, you know what I'm saying? He definitely doesn't want to be there. So send him to somewhere he wants. Um, I, I think what the casual 76ers fan, the criticism behind it is the big payday he got and the fact that they chose him over Jimmy Butler. Um, agreed. Agreed. I agree with that. I definitely agree. Philly Philly fans is crazy. They ain't fucking crazy. Oh, the only NBA live game I've ever been to was a Philly game, right? And this was years ago. But that's the point. Philly fans, you know, whether it's NFL or NBA, some uh, I y'all think motherfuckers they, crazy. Philly fans are always mad because they got to pay them damn tolls, and they still got to run into potholes. That's why they always mad. And then every game they want to go to, because most of them are coming from Jersey, they got across the bridge, and all these other. That's why they always angry, and that's what it comes down to. But uh, hey. you know, that's besides the fact. Somebody it's, commented and said, who actually wants to be with the Sixers? I fucking agree. I fucking agree. At this ooh. point, let alone you a third option, I wouldn't want to be with them. I What's wouldn't. the name? What's the name? What's the name? Who we got? Uh, Justin LaRota. Shout out to Justin LaRota. Uh, we appreciate the comment. Uh, yeah, Philly's miserable, man. Like, you, you pretty much, like... you. Everybody would rather be in New York, if we're being honest. I, I'm not a fan of New York, but pretty much New Jersey is like the the off uh, off brand version of New York. It's pretty much what. What are you talking about, New Jersey? He's in Philly. Hold up, how do you just come at Jersey neck like that? What the most fuck? Philly, most Philly fans are from Jersey. Whatever. 
Keep it's that right. shit over there. Effect, Keep that. Like, no, it's not. No, the fuck is not. No, yes, don't it bring is. that shit to Jersey. No, it's and, not. And they always have to commute because no one, nobody wants to live in Philly, so they gotta go to Jersey. That's where the stadium's at. Trust me. Try. I know this shit, bro. All right. Anyways, when well, NFL stadium, not NBA. So whatever. Besides the point. Uh, all right. Let's get to let's get to some good shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to what people want to talk about. People want to talk about more 76ers shit. We're going to talk about James Harden. Again, signing his player, uh, his, what? We got movement? We got movement in chat? No? Okay. Uh, James Harden, uh, he signed, again, his player option. He's still expected to get traded because he doesn't want to be with the 76ers. So, where do we think he might go um, and how this might go for him? It's crazy. I'm going to let you lead on this only because of the simple fact. Um, I didn't know he signed it. I was refreshing my shit all day, and I didn't hear shit until I was working, and I still ain't hear shit. So, I'm, I'm going to let you lead with that. I didn't know about it till now. Yeah, what was posted about two to three hours ago? Um, it was like, I believe, $36 million uh, of money I would love to have. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean that's the contract he signed for. Because I think it was because he uh, he signed with a team that like he wasn't with before, so that was the max he could get um, with that. Um, mm. Damn. Uh, but yes, so every everything's telling me he's going to Houston. It seems like this is his home for him. I believe his family still stays in Houston. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so that when I say home, home I mean, cause I don't, he's not married. Maybe he's married. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that suck ain't married. Now he one of the biggest <laughs> holes in the league. Like, don't even, don't even flex that beer for a reason. But, uh, well, I mean, that you touch on a point that I was just about to bring up. Uh, you know, his second home is where the strippers are at. So I think that's, <laughs> I think that's, uh, another reason why he wants to go to Houston uh, I don't blame him, man. If that's your scene, that's your scene. That's not necessarily my scene. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? He he loved the big booty holes, and that's where he wants to be at. Um, and, big booty holes! Uh, those, are, those are his, uh, his what, grandma cookies? What's some shit's called? This is, uh... <laughs> That's his, You're going in on my man right now. <laughs> no, nah, I love him, bro. Like, I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Like, we all know. Like, let's let's not, oh, you know, shit. behind the fact. Uh, but the, you know, it seems like home for him. Um, that it's a young team. I think I, I feel like if he does go to Houston, right? If he signs, if he agrees to be, get traded to Houston, I think that it tells me that he's giving up on his. Uh, his dreams of, of getting a ring, right? Uh, I think those dreams were still alive when he went to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But that didn't turn out how he wanted to. He dealt with some injuries there. Um, and, you know, the whole Kyrie situation. It was just drama from start to finish, right? Uh, and then, you know, he gave so much effort when he before when he was in Houston. And just to come up a Chris Paul injury short of a title, or at least going to a championship, uh, that that's it, it's rough for me. So I, I do think if he goes to Houston, he's just giving up. And I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. I I definitely agree with that. I think if he goes back to Houston with that roster, you're not winning shit. And at this point, you're not even a, the the old James Harden that we're used to seeing. If you was the old James Harden that was giving up. Or putting up, excuse me, uh, thirty and ten, or in close to a triple double. I mean, you was damn near. It was a season you was damn near averaging close to a triple double, and you was in the MV, You were MVP conversation with with Russell Westbrook, and it was a debate. If you was putting up those kind of numbers with Philly, they would have been a lot closer than what the fuck they've been. But they haven't because he's not the same. He's older. His game has changed. And I think him doing that is like you said, absolutely. It's just throwing in the the the, the towel. It's him saying, I mean, I just want to be home, collect this bread, and I'm I'm gonna retire where I wanna be, and that's it. But at this point, I mean, I don't I don't think he can turn it around. I don't think he can go back to his old ways of the triple double and all that. That that I mean, 
Cause it, if you really watch his game, some of his shit is dying. His his game is dying. They caught they caught on to it defensively, all of that. I, I don't think he's the same. Keep so talking. I, Keep talking. That's 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 kind of where I'm at with it. I, I I do feel like he's he's not the same. He can't go back to his old self. That was him when he was younger, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Keep talking. Um Justin commented he's going to LA. Him for Paul George. Him for Paul George is huh. That's interesting. I I have That's... heard I have heard Clippers are um are are super interested. Uh no, whether that happens or not. It's just another destination I, for him. You know, I now you gotta deal with two people. I mean it's the same how, situation. I don't I don't see a difference. In the Clippers situation, how would that I don't see work? a difference in Harden. What you mean? It's the same it's the same thing as Oh, they will put Maxi at the one, Paul George at the two, Tobias three. Okay, and then keep their watch card. That's not I mean they I'm hearing they're really, really liking Maxi. Don't get me wrong. I think yeah. he could be a beast, but I don't think he's gonna be like an all star. No. I don't think he's that good. I see him as like a discount version of Jalen Brown. And when I say this, uh, I just mean not a, like he's right underneath them. Like he's not Jalen uh, Brown. You heard me. The same uh, the same handles, uh, the same, you know, turnover prone mistakes. Uh, Max can get busy, but like he's just a little careless. He had, he had some uh, trouble with that in uh, in the playoffs, specifically with that, uh, that last series they were in with uh, – who uh, with the Celtics? Got you. Just it, it's just when that tighter coverage comes. He said injuries, easy way to get rid of Paul George and save money. I mean, if he taking thirty six million, being James Harden for Paul George, because ain't Paul George over forty five? Forty five? What? Like eight million? I was no. like, what the fuck? I was like, what are you smoking? It's no, like, over 45, 8, uh, 8, look, now you got me saying 45 million. I think, I think Paul George is like over 40 something mil. And if you saying James Harden just took it for 36, don't get me wrong, that's a deal on Philly's part. Cause I thought his shit was higher than that, but that's, that's a, that's a deal. That's a bargain. Yeah. Let me, uh, go to the Wolves post. Uh, keep talking for now until I get to the Wolves. Um, yeah, so the the team the team's interested in James, to my knowledge, is of course Philly, which you say he did re uh, resign, but they could possibly trade him. Houston, of course, the Clippers that we talked about. This dark horse team that I didn't would not expect, and I hope they don't do it, is New York Knicks. That would be disgustingly ugly. Um, Phoenix, and recently within the last hour, you got the Heat talking about possible James Harden. 35, $35.6 million option. And they're working together to exploring trade scenarios. Uh, and so the, 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 the Clippers the, and the Knicks are teams to exp, uh, to be expected to try to get hard. Which yeah, I think the and, Knicks, I, would, I like the Knicks idea mm-hmm. more than I like the mm-hmm. Clippers idea. Mm-hmm. I don't my, see... My, Miami's a better fit. Miami's a better fit. No, first off, Harden would never want to be on the the damn Miami Heat's weight program. This man does not want to weigh go, himself. They have a they have, You know how many strip clubs they have? What the fuck are you talking about? You know what he, he could be he down there, he, bro. He he wants to be comfortable. He don't want to be in a disciplined championship. Like if we're being honest, Harden is not the type to be uptight in a championship uh, uh, franchise. Like let's be honest. Like he want, he it wants is, to it's win not about in the that. most. Bro is trying to go. Ums, ums. He's trying to go <laughs> ums, ums, <laughs> and go like this. I want to ums, too. I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, that. But that's what I'm saying. But he doesn't want to do have both of those at the same time. He won't. He doesn't want. He wants to do it how he wants to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. He don't. He doesn't want to really have to buckle down and be as serious as, as what Miami Heat players have to do essentially when it when they go. He he doesn't hit me as a Miami Heat type of player. Their, their culture, I get you, I get you. Now, if he if he was willing to give up and make sacrifices, and 
you know, if he buckled down, it would, how about this? It would impress me if James Harden made the decision to go to the Miami because I don't see that being his thing. I don't see that being his vibe. Now, Miami, Miami older, the city itself, wiser, yes. You know? But if that was the case, he knew he could go, he would go to Miami, you know, every weekend if he could choose. But like that, and I have to play for Miami. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, that's what it is. All right, let's talk about another former Brooklyn player, and Kyrie Irving uh, is a very fascinating. I feel like he, I feel like Kyrie right now really is dynamic in this whole NBA offseason. I feel like he sets the tone for a lot of players. I feel like a lot of people are watching where he goes. A lot of people are watching where he goes. And I feel like it's more fascinating than James Harden because I feel like Kyrie can still ball at a prom level versus where James is kind of like past his prom. And the only thing I was commenting about that. No, no, no. I listen. The only thing I would say, and it's and and this is the issue about both of those players, because we all know they are uh or they can be game changing and and team changing players is the salary cap. Most teams that they would go to for contending reasons can't afford them. So unless they are willing to take a major pay cut, teams can't afford them. And that's the that's they're both in the same boat with that. Like Kyrie's teams, Dallas, Rockets who have the cap, Miami, it will be obviously a signing trade, Phoenix, it will be a signing trade, and even the Lakers will be a signing trade. So nobody can really afford either of them because the the teams that do have the cap to sign them are like the Spurs, Detroit, um, Houston. It's it's these these lower tier rebuilding teams. So it's like let's be real. The only way you're going to get there is if those teams are willing to give up a, a crazy amount to possibly not even win it again or win at all. So it's just like. Do you really have a chance or do you really have a, a, a choice of your destinations? I hear like Kyrie's listening to um he was listening to Houston's offer. He'll listen to them. He'll meet with people. Let's be real. You're not going to Houston. You're not going to be with a young team. You're at the end of you're in the prime slash end of your career. You're not you're not going there. The only the, the best place for Kyrie is to stay in Dallas and try to them work around him and Luca and figure the shit out. Yeah, That's I just, I I definitely agree. Is there any place besides Dallas uh, that you'll be down with? I'll be right back. Uh, for Kyrie, I mean, I could see the Miami thing because of the simple fact they played a defense without him. They don't need him to play defense. They need a, a score, somebody that they could just sit there and uh, let watch them do the do and just kick out and shoot threes. That's that's what Jimmy Butler tries to do, but he can't. He's not a. He can't create his own shot as efficiently and effectively um, as Kyrie would. So I think Kyrie would be an okay fit in Miami. But again, the trade assets they would have to give up for that because they can't afford him. So they would have to be a signing trade. And I don't think Dallas would be like, well, we're just going to watch him walk for a, a first round pick in twenty thirty. No, they're going to try to be greedy and be like, throw in. Um, Struess, throw in um, anybody that could shoot that could work around Luca. Like I feel like they'll they'll try to be greedy as they should to get the the best out of the deal. So that's that's where my head is at with it. But it's either Luca, it's either Dallas or Miami. I don't really see any other team. I'm hearing Phoenix again, but I don't think he'll team up with KD. That's too much. Like four motherfuckers like that on one team. That's doing too much. They they need to chill with that. I'm really in love with the Mavericks idea just because I feel like it's too soon to break that up. I feel mm. like half a season wasn't enough to uh, finish the experiment that was. And I feel like something beautiful can kind of come from it. Uh, him and Luca, And they can figure a way out. Uh, I feel like, again, half a season just isn't long enough to really implement things to complement Kyrie's game. Or mm. just figure out that two, you know, the two man between him and Luca. I don't think it was it, it was long enough to really to to really perfect that. And it, obviously that showed in the playoffs. And it just didn't 
not having enough time, I think, really equated to just not having playoffs, you know, six, or getting into the playoffs. Uh, they, they they didn't make the playoffs. And, and so I think that, you know, you give them some more time. I know they didn't make the playoffs. That's what I said. Uh, but it didn't equate to playoff success because as soon as he joined, it things just went downhill. And, I, mm-hmm. and that's what happens when you choose to break up a team and you trade, you know, a good portion of your team in the – the chemistry that you already had. So I think you, you bring Kyrie back, you really give you time, the off season to really recreate that. Now word is Kyrie doesn't want to be back with the Mavericks. That's what I keep hearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think also to combine what I'm thinking with what I think you, you were trying to say is these max players are going to have to adjust their, expectations when it comes to getting paid because of the new uh, salary cap rules. And I think that you're going to get a lot of these role players, essentially, they're going to be making a lot of money because these max players aren't going to want to lower their expectations. They, they feel like they're worth more because Kyrie was making that type of money when he went to Brooklyn. And you can't have that amount of max players on one team now. And so now they have, like, okay, well, this isn't what we're going to continue to get. And that, that comes with lowering your expectations. Um, and and, and, and to, to, to piggyback off of that, the thing is, necess- is it's more the, the players do need to take a pay, more of a pay cut, but that's because right now the teams are paying people. They overpaid early on. So with the cap being the way it is, if it's at 134 and three people is at over that or at 128, look look how much certain owners aren't willing to pay that luxury tax. They're like, we, I know we can't compete with X, Y, and Z. Why am I about to pay 120, 100, or over 100 million for us to lose in the first round? No, I'm not paying that shit. So it's just like now I'm, the, I'm forcing the players to take a pay cut. So if y'all want to team up, one of y'all motherfuckers got to take a pay cut. It's, I like it. I it, I think it makes them more humble in a way, the superstars. Or you go fucking be a Giannis and you or a Joker now, and you you're the only one with a super max on your team. I, I I like it. I like the way this shit is going. It stops the fucking teaming up KD shit. I, I like it. Get, it's getting rid of that. I like it. I really do like it. Well, it's definitely going to help these small market teams. Like, let's be honest. What was the last time, you know, people were really, like, thinking about the Dallas Mavericks, going to the Dallas Mavericks? You know, like, the 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 top teams that we've been talking about, uh, it's going to get a little watered down. We're not going to have those three superstars again. So, I think uh, those small market teams that, that, aren't, that aren't really popular, I think they're going to have a chance now. Uh, you I agree. know, Kyrie's looking at them like, you got the money, I'm coming with you. Like, you know, okay, I got to live in Utah for a little bit if I want to, you know. Pray to God, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh I, worst case scenario, I have to go to, get. Oh, give me a random, I have to go to Charlotte for a little bit to make some max money. Like, that, it's. You know, it's going to help the competition level and kind of spread it out a little bit more um, and really make these teams work and not try to, like, cheat code their way out of here by trying to, you know, DM. Pay for a ring and try to be like the Yankees. No offense to no Yankees fans. Facts. I mean, you buy it. No more buying championships is what we're getting to. Uh, We are going to end up moving on, but before we do... Guys, we stream every Thursday at 7 o'clock, sometimes 7.05, some 7.10. just depends on technical difficulties or we got real-life stuff going on, so we might have, you know, five-minute delays. But 7 o'clock on every Thursday, um, when things get busier and, you know, when football and basketball season is both hitting off, that's going to – we're going to double up on the shows that we're doing. It'll be two shows a, a week. Um, but until then, Thursdays, every Thursday at 7 p.m., that's our streaming schedule. Uh, we really want to hype up this uh, the streams that we have going. Uh, we appreciate everybody who has been 
you know, comment below. But we want to give that streaming schedule just so you guys can join in uh, every week. Uh, you you know, it's it's we feel the excitement, we feel the energy when it's more people listening um, and want to give some input on everything. So that's what we enjoy. Trey, you got anything to say about the streaming schedule? Uh, no, like I said, uh, it, it will be more streams when we are actually in the middle of seasons because we'll have more content to discuss. So just be patient. We'll try to bring as much content as we could during the meantime. Uh, but we do appreciate y'all being there for us. We want you guys to comment. We want you guys to be part of the show. Uh, because that's the whole point of us doing this content is for you, uh, for people to you know listen in on conversation and be involved um, and feel like you know, this is the the people show essentially uh, and this show will go as far as you guys take it. So again, seven o'clock every Thursday. That's how we're rolling. Um, and our next our next part of this show is going to be a sponsorship commercial from Dread Sock. Uh, we're about to let it play. Here you go. That's mainly for the YouTube audience. If you watch the long form content, we are on YouTube also. Um, we post the whole stream edited and fancied up on YouTube. Make sure you go watch it. Um, Dread Sock, they're amazing in hair protection. Uh, if you have locks or just wear protective hairstyles, make sure you hit the Instagram. Make sure you hit that www.dreadsock.com. Hit that store up and go buy a piece. Um, of merch um, they're great they're absolutely wonderful um, and they're a, a great sponsor for the show with that being said we're going to get back to sports most importantly football because my one true love that I haven't been able to talk about for a good while because these NBA playoffs have just ended in you know a slow season so we're getting back to it your love Recently, has been cheating on you you said what? Your love has been cheating on you. I know, man. I've been a little slow. She won't. Never mind. Let me. <laughs> he's about to be going the road, bro. You know, my one true love just ain't been giving it up lately. You know, and it's just not enough to talk to her about. So we got we got to get going. Uh, with that being said, NFL football, my one true love. Let's talk about it. Travis Kelsey, the best tight end of all time, came out. <laughs> Whoa! Hold on. We're, hey, if you're we're not Shannon, about to let that rock. If, if, Whoa! If you, say, if you say Shannon just because you're a Denver Broncos fan, you about I'm to not. I'm Shannon. realistic. I am not. It is Tony Gonzalez, but whoa. Oh, come on, man. How you going to root for your own rival for your own team? That's I, I'm not rooting. I'm realistic. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm realistic. Deep. This is this is my job, and Tony Gonzalez is the best, but go on. I feel like even Tony Gonzalez would come out and say Travis Kelsey um, is somewhat better than him, but that's besides the point. They did do a podcast show. If you haven't seen it, uh, you should go watch it. Um, but with that being said, Travis Kelsey is the subject we're talking about. He came out and uh, talked about pretty much his pay versus other tight ends. Um, and he has recently, let me get the actual post so we can talk factually about this. I don't want to mix his words up. Uh, he came out and said, doo, 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 doo. give me a second. Uh, he came out and talked about uh, people criticize how much he gets paid versus his production. Uh, pretty much he came out and said he was okay with getting paid than less than other tight ends. For example, he gets paid uh, through 2025. He ranks and pay third amongst other um NFL tight ends. He's getting paid eleven million dollars this year. And number two is George Kittle. And Darren Waller is getting paid 17 mil. He's the number one. Oh my god. 
Seventeen. Seventeen. Got to pay the play. But actually, I'm 100% fine with Darren Waller getting paid $17 million because Shut I feel up. like <laughs> he could compete with Travis Kelsey Shut when it comes to being Shut one of up. the best tight ends right now. But that's beside uh, the point. Seventeen million. I'm, I'm aching. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, that hurt me. That hurt. I was expecting. It ain't that bad. It is. That that's I mean I mean, I know he's taking a I know Kelsey's taking a pay cut, but Darren Waller could barely stay on the field. We pay well, who Oakland was or Oakland. Las Vegas was paying him seventeen million for what? And then they Let's traded him. Because he didn't because he wasn't invited to or uh, because because he didn't invite the coach to his wedding. <laughs> I mean, probably uh, He's about to make me go on like a little rant about uh, his wife. Uh, Kelsey Plum, but, uh, look, I'll, I'll, you're beautiful, oh, by the way. What a plum. What a plum. <laughs> Son, God. Uh, both two great human beings, though. That's what's most important in life. Uh, oh, shit. But let's get to, let's let's focus, 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 focus. Uh, yes, he's getting paid as the third best tight end in the game, uh, mm. even though he performs as the number one tight end in the mm-hmm. game. He mm. pretty much said he was okay with being paid less than other guys because he wins more. So he's okay with getting paid less to win more versus the other guy, guys like Darren Waller and George Kittle who don't have championship rings. Actually, but just, yeah, George Kittle. Did, wait. Am I tripping on that? What? No. George Kittle don't got nothing. Yeah, that's right. So, pretty much, he's okay winning championships and getting paid less versus not having championships and getting paid more. How do we feel about this? I I think most players, I think more star players need to be like that. And I think that's what separates, in my opinion, people like Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes. They're willing to take a pay cut so that the team can be productive and the team can produce the w's when they matter most that's what separates him or that team and people on that team from people that is all about themselves and just making sure they get their bank like for instance my opinion i think uh lamar just got the bag but look who's on that team you really don't have anybody else and i think that's what separates the the people again the people we're talking about and, and champion Super Bowl winning people not just contending winning that's the main thing you could contend every year you get to the playoffs you're allegedly contending in football uh, okay it's it's one game so it's a little bit different than basketball but let's be real here are you really contending knowing that all you have to do is shut down one player and it, it's over no you're not I'm I'm sorry so I I think in a sense of more players need to be like that, let alone superstars need to be like that. And in, re- in regards to taking a pay cut, letting other people get some money, just so it makes the team better. Because their team isn't all that. But the simple fact they have decent enough players around their superstars, that's what makes them contending every single year. And it's going to continue to be that way because they're unselfish, not only with the way they play, but also just their Clearly, they're freaking pockets because we all know Mahomes could be getting 60, 60 million a year. He's the best player quarterback in the league, but he's not doing that. That's just an I'm, example. I'm going to call Cap, okay? I think you're absolutely wrong because the reason why he can afford to not get paid as much or, um, for example, uh, Tom Brady could – not get paid as much, right? He he would take team friendly contracts, mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. while Pat Mahomes can take team friendly contracts, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. because they know they're gonna go either way, and so they're more likely to take. They they know they're gonna go to the Super Bowl more likely, or pretty much essentially in the Patriots case or Kansas City's case, is that a Super Bowl is automatic bid for them because they have a Patrick Mahomes or they have a Tom Brady who we know are is essentially going to go to the Super Bowl more likely. But for, let's just say... I play Not if he throw it to your neighborhood food line co-worker. What, what the fuck? Hell no. What are you talking about? 
if he's talking. throwing to nobodies, if he's th- if like if he's throwing to nobody, not even speed people, how is he gonna get to the Super Bowl? He's gonna throw it up in the air and they, he has to catch it himself. Somebody has to catch the shit. How did he he's go last year? To, how did how they go last year? Because that's what you told me a few episodes ago. Was the Kansas City? You, if they can make it with Juju Smith Schuster, they'll be all right. And you said Juju isn't. Was a Juju is not a. He's not freaking your neighborhood food line worker. These suckers, you, you got you telling me if he's not taking a pay cut, they can't afford nobody else. Then he would be forced to work with these people. This I'm this saying is, this is a this is exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying if you play for the Raiders and I'm Darren Waller, yeah. of course I'm gonna sign for that 17 mil. Because I know for a fact, most likely I'm not going to the Super Bowl. But if I play for Kansas City, and most likely the chances are I'm going to the Super Bowl. So I'm willing to do those team friendly contracts. But if I play for the Giants, why the why the hell would I think about not signing for as much money as possible when there's prob a less than ten percent chance I'm going to the Super Bowl? But mm. I know for a fact if I play for Kansas City because we have Patrick Mahomes, that I'm willing to take less because they'll give us some depth, and most likely we do have a chance of going to the Super Bowl. But for these other teams that don't have the type of success and don't have the uh, – no one else has a player like Patrick Mahomes, essentially. You know, maybe the Bills with Josh Allen or, you know, you maybe name a couple other players. But outside of those teams, I would never sign for less because my chances of going to the Super Bowl are going to increase just because I took three mil less. Depends for, on your position, for a depth too. piece. Depends on your position, too. I feel like that's a very key piece. Very key piece. And I again, the Patriots. Tom Brady was probably more willing to take a, a less pay because he also had Bill Belichick, and he knew more more like more than more likely than not they were going to be in the Super Bowl or at least a, a AFC Championship. You can say the same thing for the Chiefs, but you can't say that for any other team. There's not one other team that I'd be like, okay, I'm taking less money because that's going to help us that one extra player. As a debt piece to go. Fuck, yeah, fuck what do you mean? It's, it's it's two teams in the NFC now. I would I would peep, I think people would be like that for who? Uh, Philly. Unfortunately, hate them to death. And yes, I'd be okay with that. The and, and the Forty Niners. I think if you're if you're if you're on that team, you would take a pay cut to be on a team with that that star studded fucking defense. I don't yes, know who absolutely. My quarterback is why the fuck am I taking a pay cut? Because they clearly got that far with just fucking with their third string, and apparently now he's a starter. What the fuck? They could they could breed a quarterback <laughs> out there out there out Hell their fucking no. womb. Hell, Hell no. no! Yeah, absolutely, Hell absolutely. Hell they could breed they could breed a quarterback in their backyard and just be like, hey, come on, come play with us. And now apparently, oh, you're my starter next year. Y'all done traded first round picks after first round picks for this guy, and then this guy, y'all done. Gave him some fucking Michael Jordan uh, special juice, and now he's just starting quarterback. But so, we're going we're gonna to get to that later. We're going to get to that later. Uh, Woj bomb. Woj bomb alert. Do, 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 do. Woj bomb. Uh, not, it's not that important. Uh, Harrison Barnes has signed a three-year extension with the Sac- Sacramento Kings for $54 million. I'm trying to do the math on that real quick. Fuck. Uh, it's, under, it's under 20. It's under 20. 18 so mil bang. a year, uh, yeah. which is like that's half a max contract. I, I, that's, I, that's bang bad. That's under 20. Yes, that's all right for him. He can't he, shoot for shit. You have a, I was about to say, you have a stronger hate against him uh, than I do. So, I, I mean, I don't know. They... they if you watch him play, uh, even in the series this year, uh, this year against Golden State, real quick, bro, they was leaving him open to shoot threes. Bro couldn't shoot for shit, and that's why Golden State got rid of him. So it's 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 about right. It's about right. Uh, I'm assuming. I I mean I'm a fan of having veterans on your team, especially with that Sacramento team being pretty young. Um, I, I like it. I, I'm okay with it. I mean, if it was someone else besides Harrison Barnes, like I wouldn't. I don't know. I kind of, I don't know. I just don't think he, I just don't know if he could. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's not. For three years, it's not a lot. Yeah. And I mean, they could still trade him. It's not like money that's that hard to, 
you know, get Agreed. rid of. Agreed. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, back to the point. I, I'd be okay with the 49ers. You've you persuaded me that much that I, I'd be okay to take, you know, a little pay cut to play for the 49ers. Just because they have been consistent over the last few years, especially with uh, Shanahan being coach. You Which know. I'm still pissed about. That should have been our kept That should have been my head coach, but it is what it is. <laughs> he ain't his daddy. He don't want to come to Denver. <laughs> yeah, I'm still disappointed in that. Very disappointed in that. Uh, next subject: top three NFL agents, NFL free agents that may have an impact on teams. Um, I think. Let me pull up the list. Um. Yo, whoa, ain't no list. What's your top three? Y'all know who the free agents are? What's your top three free agents? I was, I looked over it earlier. Uh, this is gonna actually my number one. I, I I if I'm a lot of teams speaking about you know running backs and whatnot, Kareem Hunt. I want this man <laughs> on in, essentially any team, whether he's a backup or a start starting running back. Uh, he still he still has the juice. Cream Hunt will run through a brick wall uh, if you bet him five five bucks. He he's that guy. Uh, I think you know even even though he's been behind one of the best running backs in the league in uh, Nick Chubb, even when he has played, one he's one of the best running backs in the league. He's the best runner back in the league. I want you to correct your statement. The best runner back in the league. Now you can continue. He's in the best running back. No, he's in no, the best. He is the best running back for in running the backs. No, shut he's up. He's in the anyway, best. <laughs> go ahead, I will shut up. <laughs> uh, that's besides you. Fuck my. Bro, I can't even clip that now, bro. You be fucking my clips up, saying. Because your, your your comments be throwing me off, and it's just like I gotta say it there. I can't if, piggyback if it, later. If it's debatable, then we can debate it. But like you just be fucking the groove and the rhythm up. God damn. Uh, but yes. Fine. Cream Hunt, I'm just fucking with you. I don't care. Uh, Cream Hunt, again, still has the juice. Uh, I think he, he's just a great running back who can catch and he can run the ball equally as good. Uh, I think one thing, uh, he's another energy guy where he can just break a playoff and really uh, add to a team in that way. Not just running for yards, but like he can shrug somebody off and like the whole sideline is going crazy. Uh, you know, I don't have character worries because he hasn't had anything happen since Kansas City. Um mm. and he's a veteran now. Like he he he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. Um and again he runs like a horse, a bull. Like he just he he's got it. Uh so that that's my number one as of right now. Uh I'll hand you the mic. Uh my number one I'm gonna go with Wait, is this uh, like a draft? Are we like drafting like yeah. Our time for, all right, yeah, I like this. All right. All right, your turn. Uh <laughs> my number one, I'm gonna go with Javion Clowney. I am. I think I think he's shown that he can still be productive at the age he is, which is uh I think he's between thirty and thirty two. He's not even like old, but again, he's he's defensive end. So it's like you want experienced people. You want somebody that knows, okay, the 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 tendencies of certain offensive linemen, let alone tackles. Like he he's he's been there. So for him to still be not picked up, and again, I was I'm, I was disappointed when he went back to the Browns as a as a a fan of a team that needed defensive ends. It's just like this dude is, and he showed you last year he can still be effective, especially if you have a number one uh, defensive end. You don't want him as a number one. You some want him people, as a number some two. people, some people say he even busts heads, man. He just be busting See? heads. See, so again, why wouldn't you want <laughs> you that? On catch that. You didn't catch that. You didn't catch that. Say be busting, busting heads. You still don't get it. You, it's damn, not sinking. Bruh. No, I'm not gonna it's explain not it, bro. It's not sinking. When he I'm hit old dude with his helmet, that was Mouse Garrett. Oh fuck! I'm fucked up. The other defensive fuck man. Now I look stupid. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. God, hey, you think you got me making me think? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe I'm the one that's been drinking instead of your ass. Go ahead, man. I'm tripping. <laughs> anyway. I think he could be a good number two option. And I think, again, he, he's Overrated. a game changer. Overrated. Overrated. Wow. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. That, that was it. That's that's my number one. 
That's my number one. I got you. I, I don't hate him. I, I just, I, I think being a journeyman, uh, you know, his reputation gets knocked down a, a, a few notches at this point. He's a journeyman. Um, and not living up to that college hype because of one play he had with uh, yeah, versus Michigan. Well, he, well, he, he knocked out everybody in one play and got the fumble recovery. He fucked that man's life up. Uh, and everybody thought he was going to be one of the best pass rushers in the game. What's he, what what Aaron Donald is, let's let's be real. <laughs> what People Aaron thought Donald he was going to be slicing and dicing. Was he still good? Like I'm not going to disrespect the man like that. Um, you know, I think for this list, we're going to avoid the Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Hopkins just because we have already talked about them in uh, other podcasts and. They're probably going to get signed like any chance now. So I feel like they're the obvious choices. So uh, mm-hmm. we, we're not going to go that way. <sighs> I think someone who has potential, potential as a free agent, and and, and starting with his a new home, I think, who reminds me a lot, a lot of, like he's like a NFL equivalent to James Harden. Is Zeke Elliott? I feel like God. <laughs> I feel like has a chance uh, to to start his redemption story. Now I'm not sure if it will happen, but he has a redemption story of um, a lot of people are calling Zeke, you know, fat, overweight, not motivated, not the same player he came into the league, which he showed he wasn't last year and the last mm-hmm. couple years. As uh, mm-hmm. he's seen constant regression um, in the past few years. But I think he has a chance to really have a redemption story. If he, if right now, right, I'm talking right now, if this man is losing weight, if he is working as hard as what he needs to do to, to be a, a starting running back in this league, to be a three-down three, three down running back, I think he has a chance. Now, if he's still just partying and, you know, doing crazy stuff in Texas, I, 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 I'll take this back. But I think there's a good chance that he is working towards that. I haven't heard anything. There's no rumors out. No one's really talking about it. So, hell, he might be sitting on the couch. But <laughs> we know he has the potential and the skills to, to do it. And I think that maybe not being in Dallas with those expectations that fan those fans have, those shitty, horrible fans... Dallas Cowboy fans, I think will help him get a restart in his career. Uh, you know, just being somewhere different. You know, it's he's a running back who needs discipline and he needs a fresh home. Uh, people that believe in him and that's going to stay on his ass. And hopefully he'll find that. I, apparently, no one's... a. No one likes how much he wants to get paid, and he's going to get humbled. I don't think he'll skip this year or anything like that, uh, but we'll see. He's going to be a guy who, who if, if he signs, I want to see in training camp, uh, and I, I want to hear updates about. Uh, not hype. I want to hear actual updates, how he looks, because a big part of his game is him looking good, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I, I, I want to hear about. Your second guy, Trey. Your second. You kind of you, you was my second guy was your first guy, Kareem Hunt. Uh-oh. I ain't gonna talk much about it because you kind of already said it. I just think if you, he was a a dog as a second stringer, a second unit person, uh, sharing the backfield. So I feel like he can continue to to share a backfield and get more exposure. And I think if he was with a team that could utilize him as a possible number one, Denver. Um, in the meantime, until their other running back gets back, I think it'll be a perfect fit. So I think it's it's teams out there that would benefit from Kareem Hunt, and I think it's a perfect it's a perfect chance for him. He he's shown that he can be a number one or two back, and we all know you need at least two backs in this league, unless your quarterback is freaking Patrick Mahomes, a top three, top five quarterback. You need a a, a running back, so a, a a running back committee, excuse me. So I do think. He's shown that, and he's willing to do that. So my number two is Kareem Hunt. You know how great Cleveland had it to have pretty much two number one backs. 
on the roster. I don't and know, how good I, they I, had I don't it made. Why they let him walk? And still didn't why. and still didn't have anything to show for it. I don't know they, why. They fucked it up. Uh who's your number three? Uh would it be the number four on the list before we No. Because I can talk my about num- somebody different if that's the case. My number three is I don't want to another def- another defensive end, Yannick Inagwe. I think he as another another guy where if the situation is right, he will he he will show you that what he was when he was somewhere in Jacksonville. I know his situation died in that Jacksonville, but that was due to the the team just changing completely defensively because he's shown when they were. Um, Top notch in the league defensively, he could she showed you what he could possibly do on a top notch defense. He was young at that time, which is even crazier. So give him the experience. I think he can even he he knows what it takes. So if you put him on a red a veteran team, he's not a number one. He could be a number two slash number three option. And I think he'll show you the veteran experience that a team needs. So I I do think he could be a good um Number two guy, not even a, a, a off the a, a, the second unit, just the opposite side of your number one. I think he's a good game changer, and I think the Colts letting him walk. Maybe they think they got something better in 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 their in their uh in their defense somewhere. Maybe, but we'll we'll freaking see. I agree. Uh, I think he's a good high high motor, uh, super quick. So I mean, that's always good for your pass rusher. You know, uh, it's definitely what you want. Uh, my number three is going to be Marcus Peters. Uh, I think that the reason why Baltimore is expected to re-sign him, uh, I think the main what, wait, what? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that hoodlum. <laughs> hey, Marshawn Lynch gonna run through your fucking face talking about his cousin like that. Son, yeah, I don't want Son. no smoke, <laughs> bro. Marshawn Lynch would crush both of us. Bro. No, Marshawn Lynch, I'll fuck with that dude. Is funny, I'll fuck yeah. with him. But Marcus Peters is just he, he's 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 wild. The older he gets, the wilder he gets. Like, nah, I I, I go, go ahead, though. I'm cutting you off. My bad, you good? No, it's good. I'm used to it. You know, it's fine. You know, <laughs> uh, you know. Marcus Peters, I think, is is a free agent that uh, not a lot of people are talking about. I think a lot of the reason why Baltimore isn't expected to re-sign him or sign him back uh, is because of his frame. He is somewhat smaller, uh, and his tackling isn't the best in the universe because he does have that small uh, frame. So I th- I think a lot of teams are kind of turned away based on that. Uh, mm-hmm. But, I mean, he is a wild, wild guy. But one thing you can say about him is he he's willing – he's a ball hog, man. Like, he's willing to cover anybody, and he's not going to back down from anybody. Uh, I I think a, a, one fault of his is that, like, he's a little aggressive. So, those double moves, he, he bites on a lot. Mm-hmm. But his pedigree and his – uh you know his, his his again his willingness just to cover anybody, and he he might not be the best, but he's going damn try every shot he gets. Uh, you know he can always work on some things, but uh, I, I like a guy who who wants to compete. That's one thing Marcus Peters never backed down from is competing. Uh, and I, I hope he gets the bag, man. I really want him. I want him to go to a championship level team. A contending team, uh, and I think he can. I don't know, man. I just I think he can really. Sh- I want him to be able to show people because uh, I do think he can be in that top ten list of cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, potentially top. I'm not gonna say top. Five. I'll stick top ten right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I say don't but push I, it. I, I, I want to see that. I, I really do want to see that. You know. I, get, I, I I agree that he is a ball hawk. I think, like you said, the older he got, he he um he tries to read it more than he tries to read the play before it happens a lot more. Um, I feel like his tackling wasn't always the best. Um, because he was overly aggressive at times, 
But I do think, again, in a sense of his being man to man, being his his forte and being his scheme that best fits him, just put him on a team that does a lot of man. Like, and again, I do I do, I do think he a dog. I do think he's one of those types where you're not going to say, oh, Marcus Peters over there. I'm going to throw up a go get it ball. No, nah, that's not happening. Like, I, 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 even at his age, I think he's 31, 32. You're still not doing that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I'm surprised he's not signed with somebody already. To be honest with you, uh, it's sad to a, say, you somebody somebody got to get injured. Somebody has to get injured. Then he'll be it, signed immediately. Which shouldn't even matter, bro. Like it's so I can it's so many bum cornerbacks. Not bum because if you're comparing my skill level to them, but like compared to other pros, man, it's a lot of dudes that just shouldn't be out there. Uh, you know, hell, I can think of two on. The Eagles right now, they just <laughs> and, good. And, whoa, whoa. and speaking of cornerbacks and former Eagles, shout out to uh Rasul Douglas for the for the West Virginia gear. Appreciate you, homie. Most Rasul, love. I would love for you to be on this podcast one day. Not right now, because we're trying to get them reps up and uh, we want a, a much better show before we can invite uh, invite a special guest. Uh, but any friend of Trey's is a friend of mine, uh, so you are always welcome. Continue. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Nah, you're good. <laughs> just, just appreciate it. That's just it was. I felt like it was a perfect time. We talking about cornerbacks that you know. You said something about the Eagles. It was just perfect time. So appreciate you, Sue. Uh, yeah, I'll get you on here eventually. Gotcha. Who's he playing for right now? Is he playing with the Eagles? He is in Green Bay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, so I've heard about Green Bay. I, you can ask him if it's true that they don't do quarter zone shots. And they don't do any like major uh, like uh, injury like painkillers like that. Hmm. So you ask them about that. Let me you know. Maybe it's something we can ask them when he gets on the show. Apparently, Green Bay is like one of the few teams that is anti like cortisone or any anti-inflammatory like that. Uh, they are anti that, and that's why a lot of people choose to not play for them. Okay. Uh, but apparently, that's like a whole thing. That's not like. Uh, I'm trying to figure out who your insiders is. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I, I watch other n- non. Uh, I won't say the names of the shows, but you know, competition. I watch you know the competition and interviews they've had. Uh, but yeah, that's just some. Ask them about it when you get a chance. I had, I had a, so I saw a highlight from, or technically it was a low light from Razul that I want you. That I was going to ask him about if he ever came onto the show because I know we talked about that uh, when we started coming up with this podcast. So I've uh, I've actually got some questions already ready for him. So whenever you know that 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 we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Uh, all right, we are gonna every week until the NFL season starts, or at least till preseason gets around that time. Uh, we're gonna be going over a each. Uh, division uh, every week will be one division we pick uh, we co-signed that this is probably one of the worst divisions uh, if not the worst uh, so we're going to go over this just because they're probably not going to get much better than what they already are uh, so with that being said I kind of picked the order of how like worst to best so mm-hmm. first we're going to go with the Cardinals <laughs> Same page. Same fucking page. We agree that the Cardinals are going to be the worst NFC West team this year. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. Woo! In the league. Calling it now. They're going going for Caleb Williams. Yeah, I don't think that's a... a, 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 That's not a not popular opinion. So, yeah. Go ahead. Caleb Williams, they're going for? Yeah, I, I, th- I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They're going to end up drafting Caleb, and sad to say, they're going to end up trading Kyler Murray. Um, offense is just, they got rid of, they have no weapons. They don't have anything. Kyler Murray sitting out this whole year because he pretty much tore his ACL at the end of last season. And they're going to use this year just to, like, hopefully keep his trade value high, but he's not playing. So this whole year he's out. Defense... Um, they lost their defensive coordinator, Vance Joseph. He's back with Denver. And they're just, I mean, they have some 
highlight. They have some key pieces over there still in Buda Baker. Um, Isaiah Simmons is moving to safety, apparently, which is a good fit for him. Um, but I, I still think they don't have enough to compete with anybody else in the NFC. So I think in general, one of the worst teams, if not the worst team next year in the league, will be the Cardinals. I agree with you that the Cardinals, this is the Caleb Williams year, or whoever the the top-notch quarterback coming in next year's draft um, mm-hmm. will be. Everybody's saying Caleb Williams, but a lot of a lot of people said that about the um, kid from South Carolina, or that's playing for South Carolina now, uh, I think Spencer, whatever his name is. Uh, uh, so, Rattler. Yeah, I hate that kid so much. Uh that's besides the fact. Uh, but, yeah, I, who, whoever is the top-notch quarterback coming out the draft next year, this is this is your team. I hate to tell you, man. Uh, so, shout out to you. I hope you're looking forward to your NFL future. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't think there, it's surprising to know that, you know, the team with the worst resources or rated the worst uh, player-friendly teams – is the same team that's going to be one of the worst in the league as far as performance and record. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think there's a surprise in that. Kyler, there. I know you brought him up. They don't know if he's just going to play this season. There are some reports that it's not getting much better. Um, mm-hmm. He obviously did get hurt later on in the season, so we don't really know. Um, but it doesn't really matter. The season's pretty much over with. Colt McCoy isn't going to lead you to the playoffs. Uh, there just isn't a lot of bright spots. You had J.J. Watt, who retired this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you had, I mean, you brought up Buda Baker, right? You brought up Buda Baker. He's as for They're a trade. a trade, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, every, all, the, all the signs are on the wall. It's not going to be a good season. Um I mean, I don't want to bash them too much, but like, it's just there's not a lot there. Uh, they if they suck, they suck. What the fuck? What are we about to sugarcoat shit? Y'all ass. Cardinals is ass. Plain and simple. Y'all about to be the worst team in the league. Get it ready sucked. for the following draft. But you know what sucks, man? It was so so many expectations last season because of Kyler and you know him. I mean, ever a lot of people for the last two years that thought you know this was gonna be one of the upcoming teams and you know for everything to kind of go downhill with DeAndre Hopkins you know leaving or he was released correct yeah he was released yeah that you know it's so many it's so many things uh now you've you know I talked about JJ Watt you got veterans leaving now like all your leadership is pretty much out of the building uh and again, I don't think Colt McCoy and James Conner is gonna be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, I don't think Yawn. that's gonna get you far. I thought like uh, we gave him too much time already. Yawn. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not gonna go far. All right, uh, I'll let you. Who do you think my next team is? If we're going uh, Rams, absolutely the Rams, absolutely Ooh, the Rams. Good job, the Rams. Look at you, look at you. Rams Same is page. the next worst team. They need to get rid of all their vets. They started off with Jalen Ramsey. They let uh, Michael. Uh, is it, mm. Whoa, whoa, that's, that's, bro! Is this social mm. justice uh, podcast? Is this sports? Wrong, right? Floyd. But <laughs> the Floyd guy, they let him walk. Um, they whoa, yeah, they just. Wait, so you remember Malcolm Floyd, like the receiver for the Cardinals back in the day? Yeah. So do you know he actually has a brother, and his parents let him name his baby brother, and he chose to give his brother the same name as himself? So they got two, like Malcolm, is Malcolm, <laughs> and then Malcolm, <laughs> and they got the same names. But anyway, this is random. My bad. I saw it on the. Yes, uh, that's completely today. random. And why do you know that? I don't <laughs> we, know. We were talking about the Cardinals. But I don't know why you know that. But Malcolm, yes, the 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 Rams just need to get rid of all their vets. Don't waste Aaron Donald's time. If he wants to retire, let him retire. If not, trade him to another team. Which I don't think he's going to play for anybody else. Um, he Matthew just Stafford. Didn't he? didn't he just resign? I'm pretty sure he just resigned. I get, but why? They're gonna they're gonna be ass. Um. 
Matthew Stafford, yeah, they still got Cooper Cup, but I mean, you can't throw him. You could throw him the ball thirty times, but you don't. He he can't win your Super Bowl by himself. They they didn't win by the, himself before. So with that being said, they're the next ass team in that division, in my opinion. They're 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 the third worst. I did have them as the third worst, but I do think they're in a prime spot to rebuild just because they had a pretty good draft. Uh, they've got a they drafted a receiver of I can't pronounce his name. It's like Puku or something like that. Uh, he's pretty damn good. He's supposed to be like the quote unquote from what I've heard the next Robert Woods of their team. Uh, he has a chance. They did draft really good um, and across the board. They just had a great draft. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think they're as bad as what you, you're making them seem. Like they're gonna have a, they're not gonna have a good season. Like they're gonna have best case eight win season, right? Uh, and that's low, a lot. I, that's best case scenario. That's why it's high. And then worst case scenario is like three to four wins. Uh, they're definitely still they're in the middle of a rebuilding stage. Um, they pretty much their down season was like they the worst season they're gonna have. It can't be worse than what last year was because, mm-hmm. you know, you, that the worst thing that could happen to you was losing Stafford, losing Cup, right? Well, I'm going to assume that all of that isn't going to happen this year. And so I'll give them – I think they'll get seven, eight wins. Um, they had one of the worst passing games in the league last year. Um, mm-hmm. And – Obviously, they had like multiple quarterbacks, four to five different you quarterbacks. About Baker year. came in and did his thing. Chill out. That's why he got the starting gig now. Don't come at Baker last year. He had he was one good ball. Let's get the fuck he out of here. He was balling. Fuck I, y'all. He's, he's another kid about. I can't stand, man. Fuck Baker. He was balling. Fuck is he talking about? Hey, we don't even know if Baker's going to start between he's him and Trask. going to start. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, he's going to start because he was balling. Fuck you talking about? Yeah. Get fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... I don't think they're as bad as what you kind of made them seem. I mean, they're not going to be playoff... They're not going to be a playoff team. Uh, but they won't be terrible. I I am interested in what Stafford does because that's, you know, the big name. He's the one having elbow issues still. Um, I want to see where that goes. Um, Cooper Cup, I think, will have a Cooper Cup season, and that's the one thing that will keep get them to eight wins. Uh, again, you you brought up them losing Ramsey. Uh, they drafted really good for the defensive line, so I think that will be back. Not as great as if you have Von Miller, but like, you know, it'll be there, right? Got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I I don't think it would be as bad as. Well, a lot of people make it, but I, it, they're not gonna be amazing. They're not gonna be amazing. But Cooper, I think Cooper Cups. Say something stupid. Say something fucking stupid. <laughs> like, go ahead and say he's gonna be MVP. Go ahead. I no, fucking I, hear no, you. no, I'm not. I'm not that hard on Cooper. Okay. I, okay. It's just it's a it's a uh, it's a vibe that's lingering around this team. Every time I think of, about them, they're like, what happened last year might happen again. Like. You know, I said most likely it won't happen again, but like the whole Stafford being hurt, Cooper, something happened to Cooper Cup just because he is that one guy for that team. You you, you keep giving these bum teams all this time, and it's just like, why? yes, because it's important. Why? Break it down. They, they suck. They're not doing anything. They suck. It's one guy. You could put three people on them, and then what they're gonna do? They they don't have a running back. They don't have anybody else to throw the ball to. They suck. They Cam, fucking suck. Wait, first off, Cam Akers isn't terrible like he's okay he's not again oh my you God. gotta be not, it's not bum or not bum this isn't the game we're fucking playing like you know they're they're decent again we're talking about a decent team and i wouldn't be surprised again if they get eight wins max actually i'm gonna pre- i'll say seven wins they get seven games seven wins this season we gave them more time than we did the cardinals and it was worse <sighs> What, you, what do you mean? What, uh, according to you, we give the bad teams less time. So that's what we're doing. Are you, you know what I'm saying? We're, anyways, all right, uh, we got Raiders. I'm not, I, I kind of put them in the Raiders are not in that division, sir. It's talking to Seahawks. What? There's four teams in that division. Oh, Think about shit. it. Wait, that's who I got. Seahawks a, and San Francisco. 
I don't know where are you talking about the Raiders. What are you talking about? I'll wait. Hold on. Yeah. Because the Raiders is in the AFC West, sir. Yeah, I'm tripping on that one. Go ahead. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Bro, that's what Google gets, bro. Tripping. <laughs> the next team on my list is the Seahawks. And they're playoff bound. I think they're very young. I, I like what they've been doing draft wise. Um, running Hell game no, is man. good. Hell no. No. Running game is good. Wide receiving yeah. core is good. Geno Smith is not the guy, but he's doing enough to keep them relevant. I think their their defense needs to be. It, they've been drafting very very good corners, very very good corners, corners that Pete Carroll can fuck with and develop. I like what they're doing defensively. I think they're a team to watch. I don't like them because I never liked the Seahawks, but I do think football analytic wise, they are a team to keep on the radar as a come up and sleeper team. So that is my number two. So, you know, we want to talk about Seahawks. I think one of the the best plays in the draft was the Seahawks going and getting the Jigba from Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the best moves in the draft to me. Uh, that whole team from top to bottom from the past few draft classes is just getting faster and faster and just more athletic. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the criticisms that C- uh, the Seahawks had a few a couple of years ago. It was so much. It was so many veterans, and they just weren't an athletic team. And they're doing the exact opposite right now. And I'm super excited. But everything stops and starts. With Geno Smith. What do we think Geno Smith really is? Because he had a great season last year. Before that, you know, he was a, a travel a travelman. And, and I don't want to... One really good season, I don't want to go off of that. So what do we think okay. Geno Smith really is? I think I think if he was to even do... If he was to duplicate in any way what he just did... Or somewhat close to it is a successful season for him. I don't think he's your your franchise quarterback. I don't think it's somebody you can build around and all that. No, you still need to go find somebody in the draft. I mean, they still got Drew Locke, which I think has a freaking cannon. Um, but again, he's not. A, I don't think he's a starter. So I, no, I, no, I, no, Drew Locke is not is not in the starter range. I, I, why are we talking about Drew Locke? I was I was going I was going through the quarterbacks, but I, again, my point was. But the Gino is Gino isn't Smith. G again. Gino isn't the long term answer. They signed him to a three year deal extension because they if they he does have a shitty year they can they can flip that and he could be a backup somewhere else. But in general, I don't think he's going to. He's not the long term. So regardless, you got a young team and he's more on the other side of that. So realistically, you're gonna have to draft somebody and develop them, and. I mean, Gino, honest, honestly, all he do is play action and throw that shit deep, which he he always had a deep ball. Like, like when he was at West Virginia, he had a deep ball. When he was with the Jets, he had a deep ball. He always had somewhat of a deep ball. He learned from Russell when he was there. So it was like, I, I mean, if the system benefit, he benefited from the system. If he was to do, if he, if the system was to continue to be around him, he can duplicate it. If not, if they change up, he going to go right back to the Jets. Uh, Gino that we all know and love. I think that he's gonna. I think he's gonna give a good medium type of performance. Like I, I don't ex, again. I don't expect it to be as great as last year. It's just gonna. I think it's gonna be some regression. But again, like you yeah. said, he's not. He's not the future of this franchise. They know it, um, and I think they're prepped to try to go get one of these college quarterbacks. Uh, now with. The draft pick they have be that low? Not sure. <laughs> but they have all the pieces that if they did hit on a quarterback, that they'd be one of the best teams in the NFL, in my opinion. And I just I, – I, I really have a, a lot of hope for Seahawks. I want to see Woolen do great this year again too. You know, young cornerback who really made a name for herself. Uh, I want him to keep balling. All these young pieces, man. I just they have a lot of potential. I I think they make the playoffs this year, regardless of 
whether Gino has a phenomenal year or okay year. Um, uh, it's a lot of potential with this team. And I'm, I'm really excited to watch him play. Njigba is, is going to be something. I don't know if next they drafted DK Lockett's. And next, next to him and Lockett, yeah, they call yep. crazy, dog. And, and, and I don't know if Najigba is, is going to be Lockett's replacement, uh, you know, in the future, if that's mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. But just a lot of potential. All, All right. right. Go ahead. What? No, they still they still got a year or two together. So is, it is. Yep. Hey, it, 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 some, it could work out. Yep. Lastly, the only only team left in that division, we got San Fran, which we all know top two, three team in the NFC. Um, stacked defensively, we all know their defense is is always top notch, if not the best defense in the league. Um, McCaffrey came on, did what the fuck he was expected to do, fucking beast and demon. And then the only question is, who the hell is going to be behind center? That's the only question. I, if you if there's any other question, please let me know. But this is the only question you have for them is who's going to be behind center? You had Trey Lance, he got injured. Then you had Jimmy G, he got injured. Brock Purdy come in and he looks like freaking the next freaking Aaron Rodgers in the sense of freaking coming in off an of injury and playing like God knows. Well, oh my God, you can't lose a game. So it's like, and then he gets injured. So it's not even like he lost the game; he got injured. It's like they don't know what to do next with quarterbacks. But it's just like at this point. You can't miss, right? What do you mean you can't miss? Miss on what? Whoever you go, I mean Jimmy G's going. So you, if you go with Trey Lance or Brock Purdy, you can't miss, right? You can't fuck up that situation, right? Uh, Not with the team possible. around him. I think it's very possible to fuck up the situation, and this is why I think so. Is because from my sources that I will not review reveal. Um, <laughs> But apparently, Brock Purdy is on the track to be healthy to start. Mm. From what I've heard about um, the surgery he's having, it's the it's the baseball uh, elbow surgery. What's it called? Um, Tommy John. Yes, Tommy John. You, there's a big chance he will he he'll come back and not be the same player he was as far as his throwing motion. That's a chance. Then the Mm. second chance is he does come back. And let's just say Trey, there's in that building, from what I've been told, there is no confidence in Trey Lance. That apparently the whole team doesn't fuck with him. Pretty much like he has no teammates that want to talk to him. He has no friends, pretty much. Uh, Apparently the sources, uh, what I've been told is, he went to an Oakland A's game. The reason why he went to the Oakland A's game is was because he was scared. Oh, he went by himself. No teammates went with him, which is kind of strange scene, especially when you're quarterback. And it's very little details, but like still important. And he went to an Oakland A's game because he was scared that if he went to a San Francisco Giants game, that he'd get booed by the fans. Because, you know, there's the most of the um San, San Francisco fans are also 49ers fans. And so he chose to go there. And then no teammates are like his friends or believe him, in him pretty much. Apparently the coaches are out on him anyways too. So the, all the hope is on Purdy and this injury. Now, let's just say at Purdy comes back, something happens or he isn't playing like he is. Now you go to Trey Lance and Trey Lance is like nobody – fuck with me then now you ain't got a choice but to fuck with me now right so i i think multiple things can happen i still think trey lance deserves a shot just because you know he had his few games everybody knew it was gonna because of accuracy issues that is gonna take a while for him to develop he didn't get because of injury he didn't get that time Mm -hmm. and people hopped on the purdy train pretty fast you know, but he had, you know, some great performances and helped that team out a lot. So I think this whole quarterback, and we've seen quarterback situations really lose, um, you make, make or break for teams. Um, and I think this can happen specifically now because there is no Jimmy G to fall back on. Right? 
There mm-hmm. is no Jimmy G to fall back on for solid, you know, a decent performance to finish off the rest of the season to, to make the playoffs. There isn't that. So I think there is a chance that this could be fucked up. But the one good thing about the 49ers is Shanahan's offense is very simple. Um, and that run game leads the way anyway. You got McCaffrey. Now, could there be a situation where McCaffrey gets hurt again and this whole, the entire offense is pretty much implodes anyway? Yes. That's why I'm going to pick the Seahawks to win this this uh, division. Uh, I know You're you a fucking idiot. I know you got the 49ers. Oh. <laughs> but there's, there's a way that the 49ers and the Seahawks both make the playoffs. So, I mean, you have that. Uh, I would fall back on that too, just because, I mean, I don't think that, I find it hard, 49ers, because of recent history, that they don't make the playoffs. So, either way, I think either both of them make it, or I'll take the Seahawks. But, yeah, I mean, overall, just pretty, it's not that bad of a, it is, of, it's horrible. Of a division, but. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, I think we're going to, why do I keep playing with this thing, bro? This audio is probably fucked up for me playing with this damn. I'm playing with this, and it's probably fucked it up. Anyways, uh, that is all for episode six of the Nuff Said Podcast. Before we end this, make sure you guys, we post this on Spotify, All Heart, all those podcast apps that you, you like to listen to your podcast at. We have it on that. We also have the long form video on YouTube. Please go check that out. Uh, again, we put a lot of time in this. Um, and, you know, uh, I think we put pretty good damn content out. So make sure you guys go check the check it out. We really appreciate the long-form content just because it takes a lot more effort to listen to that. Um, and, yeah, man, I, I think this has been a great episode. Trey, it's always a pleasure working beside you. And, you know... Uh, Stop yeah, it, man, it's stop always it, fun. Stop it, stop it. Hey, bro, watch out if I buy you some uh, crumble cookies, all right? You know oh, boy. <laughs> uh, anything you want to say before we head up? Nah, just continue to post, share these um these clips and reels on the our social medias. We appreciate it. Uh, we do take the time to read each and every one of these comments. So, again, the more you post, the more... Uh, interaction you will get so we do appreciate it and again just continue to share we appreciate it absolutely i couldn't say it better myself um with that being said that's episode six of the enough said podcast we appreciate you and we'll see you next week all right guys